This is video 82, Tubal Cain. Roll them. Video 82 is really a follow up on videos 52, 53, and 54 regarding how to buy a lathe. Since the last time we met, I purchased a South Bend 9 inch precision lathe, and I want to tell you a little bit about it and see if I followed my own advice regarding buying a lathe. This lathe will appear in many videos in the future. This South Bend lathe was made in 1959, so it's uh, over 50 years old, and just as anything that is older, uh, such as an automobile, you're going to find things wrong with it. Now, it's possible to find a perfect lathe, I suppose. It's been in some basement for many years, but uh, this one isn't perfect, but it's not bad. It has several faults, and uh, some of these I knew when I bought it. Others I discovered when I got it home. But, uh, you know, when you buy something like a car, you get excited, and sometimes you're pretty willing to overlook things initially till you get them home and you decide, uh, hey, uh, I think I got taken on this one. But uh, I paid $800 for this, and, and I am satisfied with it. But we'll, we'll just go over some of the features of the lathe, and then... Uh, some of the uh, minor things that I found wrong with it. This lathe does have the quick change gearbox and I really don't want to buy a lathe that does not have one and it came with two chucks and a tailstock chuck which wasn't much, it isn't really usable. It has uh, the motor underneath and it was a three-phase motor and I did have to change motors. I'm out in a garage without uh, any uh, 220 volts, so it wasn't possible to use a phase converter, so I did uh, put a uh, single phase motor on. This particular lathe, believe it or not, has V pulleys rather than the flat belt, and I do prefer V pulleys. Someone had put uh, one of these segmented belts on there. And actually I like that because it's easy to take the headstock off the lathe or take the lathe off the uh, base, which I had to do in order to move it. I took it off the cabinet. So it was relatively easy to take that belt off. The belt is kind of bulky and noisy, but I'm willing to put up with that. There was some minor damage to the spindle thread. Not too bad, but I saw a couple nicks on there and when I bought the lathe I, I noticed that the chuck wasn't on all the way up to the shoulder. I thought, well, that's no biggie and it turned out that it wasn't a big deal, but I put the other chuck on there and it was the same way. It didn't go all the way on. After I got it home and examined it, I realized that these were not South Bend chucks. They apparently didn't come with the lathe. One said Atlas on it, and I don't know what the other one said. But when I did some measuring, I realized that uh, I had to counterbore them and, uh, so that it would go over the end of the thread there, the unthreaded portion. So I did put the, both chucks on the Bridgeport mill, indicated them in, and bored out just a little bit. I think it was about six thousandths, and then they went right on. There's a lever on the side which allows you to tighten or loosen the belt. Now we got some light under there. And we got four steps which gives us four speeds in direct drive and another four in back gears for a total of eight speeds. So it's easy to change belts, but it's, it's nice to be able to uh, uh, loosen the belt when you do that. Also note there's a couple uh, places to lubricate there. There's the new motor that I put in, and uh, it's a, a three-quarter horse motor, single phase, with a reversing switch right there. So that was a bugger to do in uh, cold weather with numb fingers. Someone has painted the cabinet on this uh, lathe, the sheet metal cabinet, they painted it aluminum. I wish it was still the standard South Bend color that I love, and I may have to repaint it just for that satisfaction. 
Always lay your chucks on a board. When you're changing chucks or face plates, be sure and have a board there to protect the ways. This diameter right here on the counter bore was slightly off, and that's what I had to rebore on the milling machine. Didn't take very long, but initially I thought that something was the matter with the thread on the spindle, and there wasn't anything wrong with the spindle. The condition of the ways right here is pretty good. There's always a few nicks on there. I don't believe this came from a school, although this size was typical of what uh, the schools purchased for their shops, but there wasn't enough damage to the compound. And generally, if uh, lathes are from schools, the compounds will be chewed up like a beaver got a hold of them. And this one isn't bad. Before I bought the lathe, I did spend considerable time to make sure that there weren't any teeth missing on any of the gears that were visible or on the end. It isn't really possible to examine all the gears in the, in the change box, but, and it's possible that there is a damaged one in there, but I haven't run into it yet. But then again, during the winter, I haven't had much of a chance to use this lathe, but uh, I, I really like it. It's got... Uh, power feeds in addition to the half nut lever. My only disappointment on this lathe was, you know, I had the tailstock off when I moved the lathe and when I examined underneath here there is considerable wear on the bottom of the tailstock. And I have had questions where people ask me how do you align the centers vertically? And what usually happens is that uh, we do have wear on here because somebody probably didn't oil the ways or whatever, or just slid it over a brace of material over a period of years, and, and uh, there isn't really anything you can do on that, about that. This is a replacement hand wheel. Somebody's just got a cotter key in there. It doesn't look very good, but that's a replacement hand wheel. I don't know why. And the original tailstock wrench was missing, so I just sawed off a, an old wrench and uh, we'll have to make that do till I find the genuine article. We had talked about play in the cross slide screw and nut and there is some play as you can see right here. Not a whole lot but I believe you're going to find that in all used lathes. It does have the satin chrome collars which uh, I, they started putting on these lathes at about that time. There is some corrosion on these collars. I cleaned them a little with steel wool, but uh, they're still pretty easy to read, though, compared to some of the older ones that you do run across. All in all, so far, a pretty nice lathe. I think I took my own advice uh, in buying this lathe, but don't expect to find a perfect lathe. Sometimes you'll see them on eBay and it'll say this was owned by a little old man who bought it in 1949 and used it very seldom. Now those are available if you can find them but generally they have uh, prices on them like two or three thousand dollars and that may still be a bargain at that. Some of you may disagree with what I've done here but I did build a mobile base out of square tubing welded up with casters on each of the four corners so that I'm able to move this thing around the garage. It probably weighs six or eight hundred pounds and I am able to move it into position uh, by myself. Some of you might say well then you're not able to level the lathe properly and that might be true but uh, it's good enough for what I'm doing. I also installed these screws here that I can uh, tighten up and then they will just grip into the concrete enough to where the thing won't roll around or I can level it with those. There's four of those, one on each corner. The lathe runs reasonably quiet. The only noise that we're uh, hearing is that the motor I put in was a used motor and I ran it on the bench before installing it and it does have a bad bearing or a bearing that's kind of noisy. It'll probably still last 20 years, but it probably should have a bearing replaced. But it's not going to get it. 
Here's the nameplate. It's a Model A four foot bed. Sometimes after you buy something you have a buyer's remorse, but I have no remorse yet at this time on this lathe. I'm pretty happy with my purchase and uh, hope you are when you find the lathe, but uh, examine it uh, real well at the point of purchase and it's hard to find a good one and sometimes you have to settle for a few faults and you know you can always sell these and trade up. They are a very easy to sell item. So I learned how to uh, operate a lathe on a South Bend lathe and we had them in the high school when I was a boy. Also my dad had a small South Bend in the basement when we were teenagers and so South Bends still are my favorite lathe. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now.